Hey everybody, I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very different operating system. But before we get started, I want to thank everybody for watching my channel. We've reached 15,600 subscribers. Plus, I want to give a shout out to my newest member, Scully Dot. Thank you so much. You became a member to the channel yesterday. And I want to thank everybody else that's joined in the last month. And of course, send a shout out to those that have been with me the longest. Mishlav Kraleza, Skimming Death, and Stein Seiler Odland. So, what we're going to do today is take a look at Draugr OS. And their tagline is, Gaming the Way It Should Be. Now, Draugr OS is an Ubuntu-based Linux desktop distribution that ships with a lot of modifications and optimizations over stock Ubuntu. Now, these optimizations are intended to improve gaming performance and the experience. They do simple changes like swapping GNOME out for the XFC desktop using a dark theme, and then also using a recompiled in-house kernel replacing Pulse Audio and Pipewire on top of that. Draugr OS is built from the ground up with the primary focus on performance. Now, before you think about using Draugr OS, they got a couple questions you need to answer right here. Is Draugr OS right for me? You can click that open and it kind of gives you an idea of who Draugr OS was built for. It's built for the avid PC gamer looking to squeeze more performance from their rig and more control over their system. But it does give you a warning. Draugr OS is not for the faint of heart. Draugr OS is capable of breathing new life into old computers. However, it requires maintenance from time to time. Issues cropping up are not uncommon. Draugr is developed by a small, passionate team who don't get paid anything for their work. So, bugs may sometimes be common. Therefore, users who are new to Linux may want to look elsewhere to gain the experience before taking a plunge into Draugr OS. And it also goes on further to say what it's not designed for. It's designed specifically for gaming. Having said that, any sufficiently advanced user can easily use Draugr OS to do anything from streaming to video editing, audio production, to everyday use. However, you may encounter issues in the process of getting set up due to the gaming-related optimizations. But, if you do decide to try that, and you have issues, they've got a very healthy Discord server and Telegram group. So if you have any issues, you can go right here to their contact page and get any help that you might desire. We go back to the top. You've got Home, Download, Contact, Wiki, About, System Requirements, Try on Distro Test, Contributing, and then of course the Community. So what I want to do right now is, is let's go over and see the desktop. And if you download it and boot into it. Now, wait, let me point something out. When you go to their website, it actually shows a 7.5.1, I believe, and then a 7.6. Go with the 7.6. There's no more support on the older version. Now, when you do boot into it, you come to this screen right here. We're just going to go ahead and click on Try. Let's hit Enter. And I like going through here and showing you the boot menu. And I am having to use it in VirtualBox for the simple fact I tried to load it up in GNOME boxes and it would not start the display. I don't know why. I'm going to look at that here in a little bit. So we'll be looking at this one in VirtualBox. And once you boot into it, let's go ahead and minimize the welcome screen. We're going to have to adjust the resolution. So let's go ahead and come up here and look up display. And get the resolution fixed so it fits our screen. And there's 1920 by 1080. Let's go ahead and apply that. Let's keep that configuration and go ahead and close out of that. Then we'll bring the welcome screen up so we can take a look at that. You get a nice little Draugr OS 7.6 Strigoi welcome screen. You've got the Draugr OS website. Take Draugr OS tutorial. Find help. Donate. Accessibility settings. Language support. View the README. Keyboard shortcuts. Additional drivers. Should you need additional drivers for your system, you can just open this up right here. And what it'll do is it'll scan your system and then give you suggestions of what you need to install. This would definitely fall into the case of if you need NVIDIA drivers or things like that. And then you've got package name, description, installation status. And it says alternatively, you may use Synaptic Package Manager to install drives yourself. 
and it tells me right here all drivers already installed of course I'm in a virtual machine so it's going to say that or you can go over here and open synaptic from right here so let's go ahead and close out of that now one of the first things I want to do is this is the XFCE desktop environment I want to make this panel up here a little smaller it's a little big for my taste so I'm going to come down here go to panel preferences come down here to where it says row size and I'm probably going to drop that to about 40 and that'll work right there now while you're in here you've got display you've got appearance you've got dark mode background style solid color adjust size automatically and then of course you could back up restore this settings however you want to do it and then items different things you can put on your panel up here whisker menu clock system tray you can go through here and figure out how you want to adjust your panel up here so let's go ahead and close out of that so we've got our home screen right here you can see that we do have icons on the desktop and I'll probably want to shut those off and you have a little menu over here a little dock that pops out you've got Steam Firefox and then Synaptic Package Manager and then if you got this little arrow right here you can click on it and it'll say Draugr Installer you could do that from right here but we're not going to do that right now you got your panel up top you've got notifications right here sound battery level internet and of course what keyboard you're using and you've got your app launcher over here let's go ahead and open up the app launcher and first thing I want to do is just start looking at the resources we're using out of the box I'm gonna go ahead and run a top we're gonna maximize that so you can see it and right now at rest with just the terminal open you're using about 600 megabytes and that's not really bad I've got two gigabytes issued to it and it's utilizing because it is XFCE it's going to be a little bit lighter it's going to be about 150 200 megabytes lighter than let's say a GNOME desktop or even a KDE desktop but you could do some tweaking here and there to bring that down some more but I don't think you would bother it's pretty light as it is so let's go ahead and close out of the terminal come back up here and we're going to want to start looking at what makes this one stand out you've got games you click on games you've got your game hub heroic games launcher lutris and of course steam right here now your game hub is pretty neat this is where you can pretty much have all of your games on your system whether they're steam gog humble bundle itch.io whatever they would all be listed in one area and you could find them here and once you clicked on them they would open their respective launcher and automatically start the game so it definitely makes it easier to keep track of your game library so let's close come back up to applications then of course your games you've got heroic games launcher let's go ahead and open that up this is an open source game launcher that's used with some different games okay your heroic game launcher opens up and right here you can log into your epic games if you would want to or your gog games right here let's go ahead and make that maximize so we can see it you've got your login stores settings you could come over to your stores once you're logged in and it would load your website but right now it's going to go ahead and open the epic store for you so you can see it right inside of your heroic games launcher and once that populates you'll be able to scroll through all these games and take a look at everything that's available on the epic store you can also do the same thing with the gog store if you click on it it would pop up and show you the games that you could get off of gog and then you have other settings that you could deal with over here and accessibility a wiki and then you've got wine manager discord patreon ko-fi manage accounts and quit so what we're going to go ahead and do is close out of the heroic games launcher go back over and go to games and we're going to open up lutris and once lutris opens up you can open this up right here let's make that full size you've got games recent favorites lutris this is another place that you can keep all of your games in one place so you can see them all whether they're GOG, Epic Game Store, Origin, Ubisoft Connect, Steam and then of course your runners Linux, Steam or Wine so that just depends on what the game's made for is it a Windows game is it just a specific Steam game or specific Linux game and it's another library that you can keep all your games and keep track of everything that's on your system so we'll go ahead and close out of that and we've already seen Steam what else comes with Draugr OS? You've got all applications. Let's go ahead and bring that up. You've got your additional drivers, appearance, of course, audacious, bleach bit, cheese, color profile, desktop applications, or default applications, sorry, disks, Draugr installer, 
Draugr Welcome. And there is the file manager. We'll open that up. And this is XFCE, but this is the Nemo file manager. Let's double check that. Yes, it is Nemo 5.2.4. So instead of Thunar, which usually comes on XFCE, this comes with Nemo. So uh, Nemo's lightweight, stays out of your way. It's got a little bit more functionality than Thunar. You've got your usual suspects over here. you got your home folders right here. Just makes it easy to get things done in your system. Now, I want to go ahead and right-click here before we go back over. And let's go to Desktop Settings. And there's the different backgrounds you got. you got one background, which is the Draugr. And then, of course, your XFC-themed ones in the back. Menus, Window List Menu, Desktop Menus, and then Icons. Okay, default icons are home and file system. I want them off of the screen so they're not showing over here. That's just my personal preference. And then I want to go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and take the install and move it up here. And then that's kind of out of way of your little dock that you have that pops out right here. Let's go back over to all applications. Flameshot is a great tool. Let's see what else they have here. Gparted, Heroic Games Launcher, Install, Lutris, Mail Reader, MPV Media Player, Play on Linux, Power Manager, Settings Editor, Software and Updates. Let's open that up. Let's see how we install software on Draugr OS. And when it opens up, it looks as though we have Synaptic Package Manager. Now, if you're not familiar with Synaptic Package Manager, it's pretty easy. It's type, search, install type program. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you've seen how it's used. But if you haven't seen any of my videos, I'm going to show you a quick example. Let's go to search. Just type in something like Caden Live. Hit enter. It'll bring Caden Live up here. You just click right here in the box. Mark for installation. It'll pop up and show you other required dependencies for this to be installed. Go ahead and mark those. Once it's marked, all you have to do is hit apply and it installs it on your system. Pretty simple, pretty clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that and we're gonna discard that. Come back over, all applications, back down to software, system monitor, terminal, text editor, time shift, we're making backups and snapshots of your system. I totally recommend that you use this. What you'll wanna do is once you get your system set up to the way you want it and exactly how you want to run it that's when you go make a snapshot so at that point if you have any problems you can come back restore from a snapshot and you're good to go and you don't have to completely reset up your system now i did just have to put in a password there i want to go ahead and give you a heads up if you start doing things in this in a live environment and it asks for a password the password is root but spelled backwards t-o-o-r so don't forget that and then you'd come over here go ahead and click next Pick the area you want to make a snapshot of because I'm in a virtual machine. It's not going to give me that. But you would check on your SSD or HDD, whatever you have. Click it. Come down here. Hit finish. It takes a quick snapshot of it. Let's go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. And then come back down. You've got Office, Multimedia, Graphics, Games. It's a pretty solid system. But like I said at the beginning of the video, it's based more in a gaming environment you can edit on it, you can do video editing and things like that on it, but if you're just using it as a daily driver to, let's say, you know, run a web browser, do office work and things like that, it's probably not your cup of tea for that. It's just centered around gaming and not just Steam gaming and things like that, localized Linux games that you can download from the repositories and things like that run a little bit smoother in it as well. So tell me what you think. Is Draugr OS something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, 
Thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.